if you use a smartwatch like an Apple Watch or a Garmin uh, or wear an Aura Ring, you're into smart technology to monitor your wellness and your fitness. But would you be surprised to know that there is actually a smart total knee available for implantation today? Hello and welcome back. I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks for watching the channel. In today's video, I have something really new and interesting and exciting to share with you. And it's the idea of a smart total knee replacement. So interestingly enough, um, one of my viewers, Nancy, sent me a message asking specifically about the Zimmer Smart Knee. And ironically, just later that week, I was actually having a meeting with Dr. Bill Hunter, who is the CEO of Canary who is the company that designed this smart total knee implant. So um, I have to go back historically. So my mentor, Dr. Clifford Caldwell, along with the lead physician in our research lab, Dr. Daryl DeLima, invented and implanted for what was called e-knees or electronic knees. Um, this was first implanted in 2004. And these patients had an implant that allowed us to track the pressure in the knee joint in different locations with certain activities like walking and stair climbing, even things like skiing and tennis. And it won a ton of awards and it's really pioneered CAD research on what the knee is doing during certain activities and how do we better design knee implants in the future. Now, Fast forward to 2021, the first smart knee replacement, um, which is made by a company called Zimmer. Uh, their knee model is called the Persona, and it's kind of marketed as the Persona IQ, was implanted in October of 2021. So Dr. Bill Hunter from Canary Medical, along with all of his scientists and researchers there, designed this implant. And what they called it was Cantoria, which is Latin for chirp, because the implant chirps your data to a base station. It's a base station that you would keep by your bedside, and every night it would send the information from that day's activity uh, onto this device, which would then upload it for your doctor to assess and to the cloud for other research purposes. Uh, and they say that the sensor inside this implant should last for about 20 years. Once it's implanted, it will record the data um, and it allows the doctor to assess essentially how you're doing. Now, who is this for? So anybody that likes smart technology. So if you wear an Apple Watch or a Garmin, you're already interested in your step count or the activities that you're doing each day and you're assessing that information for how you're doing. Um, if you wear an Aura Ring, same sort of thing. But anybody that's really interested in metrics would benefit from this device if they're so inclined. Now, who is it not for? So if you're a conspiracy theorist, um, if you're worried about people tracking you, if you're worried about having some type of battery and implantable device in your body, definitely not for you. And there's a number of surgical contraindications. So a surgeon might look at you and say, you know, you're not a candidate for this type of device for X, Y, or Z, but understand that it doesn't make the knee better. It doesn't make you the $6 million man. It functions just like any other knee replacement, it just captures data. And what it captures is in this little device. So this is a tibial or shin bone component from the Zimmer Persona knee system. And when we put the implant in, we can put it in just like this. The option is we can remove this little set screw and we can implant a stem. So this might be used in weak bone or a large individual or for a revision. And we have the ability, this is the smallest stem design, and you can actually implant this stem on here. You lock it in place, you torque the, the set screw and it holds it in place. The smart implant is not this, but it looks just like this. So all of the information in the battery is encased inside this little stem, which gets put in the bottom of the shin bone and then gets implanted into your knee at the time of the knee replacement surgery. So what does this little thing capture? So it captures your cadence, your step count. It captures your average walking speed. It captures your stride length. It captures the distance that you travel throughout the day. It captures your range of motion, which is really important from a physical therapy standpoint in the first few months after surgery. Uh, and it captures your actual step count. Now, the original one was actually longer than this, so it was 70 millimeters, but the new ones are only 30. And I did see the design for a newer one that basically would just go inside that little hole. So it would basically be just like that on x-ray, but everything would be encased inside that base plate. Um, now, 
the benefits are it really opens up the door for tons of research. So when we're trying to figure out like who would benefit from physical therapy, who can do this on their own, who is struggling in the first few weeks and might need additional procedures like what's called a manipulation under anesthesia because they're getting stiff, um, who maybe is not walking enough steps and is then making themselves at increased risk for a blood clot, who is walking too much and doing too much and their complaint of swelling is due to the overactivity. So there's a ton of information that we might be able to use that data for to get you as the patient to have actually a better outcome. Trying to take the, the people on the bell curve far over here and far over here and kind of get everybody in the middle that's doing well and get rid of those outliers. Now, talking with Dr. Hunter, it was really, really interesting. I learned a lot about what they've done up until this point. Um, and they did do some internal data, again, showing that just as you would expect, that people with lower step counts had a higher rate of blood clot. Um, also, they've been able to look at the range of motion and sort of capture patients. The questions are certain doctors are using that metric to bring people in on different follow-up schedules. Um, and again, they're kind of capturing the people that are doing too much, sort of the, the type A personality overachiever. So we can kind of use all the data. What was more exciting to hear, because as he was talking and kind of presenting all of their research and data, you know, the wheels in my head were spinning and, okay, gait, well, gait, gait abnormalities, neuromuscular diseases, Parkinson's disease. And he was actually stating that they now have the ability to actually look at some of these gait abnormalities and start to pick up on neurologic diseases. So imagine the implica implications if everybody that had a knee replacement, which is like a million new implants in the U.S. every year, and Parkinson's rates are uh, rising, and it's really, really hard to diagnose those people early. Just imagine if a knee implant could then pick up when patients were developing the early signs of Parkinson's disease to then initiate treatment and prevent progression of the disease. I mean, that's huge. The other question too is whether or not it can predict an infection developing. So if it can predict and alert the patient to call the doctor or alert the doctor to call the patient because the implant is detecting things that might indicate an infection is brewing, that could be huge to sort of treat these people earlier and potentially lead to a better outcome down the road. Um, the other thing that they're looking at too is the vibration that um, this implant can actually test the microscopic vibration. So if we're putting in a press fit implant, there's gonna be some vibration and then it should go away. That would indicate to us that it's osteointegrated, that it's fixed to the bone. The other issue is if you put it in cement, it should be solid from day one, but if it develops motion down the road, again, that would be an indication to us that the implant could be loosening. And that could be a reason to reach out to a patient that may not have been seen in a while and bring them in for an x-ray. Now, currently it is only available with the Zimmer Persona knee system. You can't get this with other total knee designs. Um, the other interesting thing is again, metrics. So they're working on these wearables that if I was gonna do your knee replacement, you could then wear this device outside of your body um, prior to surgery. We would capture your step count and your range of motion and your cadence and your speed, and then be able to use that data with the post-operative information from the internal device and maybe tailor your post-operative recovery more to you. Because um, the question really still remains hip replacements are awesome. Like almost everybody has a really, really good result with a hip replacement. But the old studies would say that 20% of patients are dissatisfied. And I would disagree with that. I would say nowadays we're probably closer to 90% of total knee replacement patients are satisfied. But that still leaves 10% that are not satisfied. And if we can use this information to then push the needle, 95% satisfaction rate after a surgery such as a knee replacement would be a huge win. Um, and the question still remains is, will this data that we can capture from this implant allow us to make changes in your post-operative recovery to really help you achieve the goals that you're wanting to achieve after the surgery? So I really hope that you found this information interesting and helpful. I find it interesting. Um, talk to your surgeon, you know, ask if they're using these Zimmer implants and ask whether or not their hospital allows the implantation of this device and whether or not it would be an implant choice for you. So as always, I'm Adam Rosen. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay safe.